To shape the low end of a mix can be really tricky, a thing I recently experienced when mixing some songs for a client, and therefore I thought in this video that I should show you my 5 top ways and 5 top plugins to shape the low end of a mix, and there are some bonus tips for you as well in the end. When we are referring to the low end, we are talking about frequencies below maybe 150 hertz. There lives mostly the bass drum and the bass, but it could also be low guitars, pianos, synthesizers, toms, etc. We're not going to talk about tambourines and vocals in this video. And the bass drum and the bass, they need a lot of space to be able to have the energy they need to get a good low foundation of the mix, presumably presume I don't know if you want a good foundation in the low end or not but I certainly do most often in this video I will show you my five go-to ways for shaping the low end with a dedicated plugin for each way what plugins you use doesn't really matter that much I will show you the plugins I use mostly because I know them I can work fast and I can concentrate on the music more than the technical stuff but the first thing I want to show you is a boring technical issue and that is to check the face. So let's listen to a bass drum. This bass drum is two tracks, it's an acoustic played bass drum and also a sample. And you should always check if your face is correct when recording acoustic drums certainly, but any time you record things with multiple mics, check the face to get the low end right. These two tracks are more or less in phase, or well, they are good enough in phase. I don't know if they are exactly in phase or not, but they are certainly good enough to mix with. Let's listen to it again, and then I will flip the polarity, flip the face of the sample, and you will notice what happens. All the bottom end goes away because now they are more out of phase from each other. And for this I only used the gain plugin from Logic where I used face invert. You probably have something similar if you don't use Logic. And that is enough 90% of the times. But if it's not enough then I go to this guy. The UAD Little Labs IPB, because here I can adjust the face more, I can have more control over the face, and I can also adjust the delay between the tracks. Sometimes you have to move the track in your door, one, two, three milliseconds, so the tracks align more together and therefore are more in phase. So the first tip is check your face. The second is to use an EQ for taking away frequencies. Let's listen to a bass. This bass sounds okay, but it's a little muddy, especially in the low end. So I put my go-to plugin for this on the bass, and that's the Pro, that is the Pro Q3 from FabFilter. And the first thing I did was to high pass the bass. Yes, I took away bass frequencies. I took away everything below 45 Hertz because they were not needed and therefore the frequencies that are needed get more space. The frequencies below what's needed doesn't take up energy. And then I also notched out a couple of frequencies and I exaggerated the notches so you will be able to hear them. Now the bass sound like this. It's more controlled, I would say. And did you notice that I didn't lose any bottom end on the bass, even though I took away all frequencies below 45 Hertz? Use the high pass filter to your advantage. The third way is how we perceive, how we hear the low end, especially from small speakers like laptops or phones. Here is a 909. It's a sample, sounds like this. 
that will probably drown in a mix and you won't be able to hear it properly, especially in small speakers like from laptops. So I put a distortion on it. And this is my favorite distortion of all time. It's the FabFilter Saturn II. It's my favorite because of many reasons, but I have oversampling. I can use different distortions on different frequency bands. And now it sounds like this. This is pretty subtle. Let me take it away and then I will put it in. But this creates harmonics above the low end frequencies, which makes the bass drum, in this case the 909, more audible in the mix. The fourth way is so obvious, I will just mention it quickly, and that is, of course, to boost low-end frequencies with an EQ. And for this, I usually go for a more analog-style EQ. In this case, I put a Pultec EQ on the bass drum, so without it... And I boosted the low-end, 30 Hz, to 5. This is not decibels, it's just numbers. And now it sounds like this. The Pultec is nice if you want a round, big low end. If you want a more pointy low end, maybe you should use another EQ. But this is one of my favorites. And my fifth way is to use some kind of subharmonic, a low end enhancer, you might say. And I will show it on the toms. We have a couple of toms. The first one sounds like this. And the only thing I did was to shape the sound a little bit with an EQ. Not much at all. I think it sounds okay. In context, it sounds okay. But the second I struggled with because it sounds like this. It doesn't have the impact I want. So I shaped the sound with an EQ and took away a lot of low end. Now it sounds like this. No bottom end at all. But I reintroduced some bottom end with this R bass from Waves. I put it on 86 hertz and pretty loud in volume. So now the floor tom sounds like this. Without the R bass. And with it. Now the tom has the impact impact I needed. This you can use on other things, of course, as well. Bass drum and bass, for example, but I didn't think that was needed in this song. Before we get into the bonus tips, let me know your method of dealing with the low end. What plugins do you use? Please leave a comment. Bonus tip number one is to take away low frequencies from tracks that don't need it. It could be piano, guitars, percussion and so on that interferes with the low end from the bass and the bass drum and other instruments or vocals that need that low end. If you take away low frequencies from other instruments, you will make space for the instruments that needs the low frequencies. The second tip that also creates space for the tracks that need the low end is to use sidechain, sidechain compressor. Let's listen to the bass and the 909 together. It's not the worst example in the world, but you can hear they are muddying together in a strange way, so you can't clearly hear the bass and the 909 as a separate tracks. So therefore I put a compressor with a sidechain from the 909 on the bass. So now when the 909 hits, when that has a signal, this will compress the bass. Listen if you can hear the 909 more or less clear when the compressor is in. I take it out first. And my favorite compressor for side chaining is actually Logic's own compressor. It's fast. That's why, I think. But if you don't want to do that, if you don't want to compress the whole bass signal, because bass, uh, an electric bass have such a big frequency range, you can use a multiband compressor to do the same thing, but only compress the low end via sidechain. I've done this here with a 
Pro MB from FabFilter, also one of my favorite plugins. Now it sounds like this. So everything above uh, around 200 Hz, the compressor won't touch, but it will compress the bass below 200 Hz to get more room for the 909. And my final bonus tip is to make your bass mono. And I usually do that on my master bus. My favorite plugin for it is this BX Digital V3 for several reasons, but I can adjust. This is an MS EQ, so I can adjust the sides and the mid separately, and therefore I can high pass the sides very easily, or I can just go on the mono maker. This is the whole mix with the bass in stereo, and then I will turn up the mono maker, and you will hear the difference because I will exaggerate it. I usually land somewhere between 80 hertz and 150 hertz on this mono maker knob on this plugin. But you can do this with any MSEQ. If I would translate low end to Swedish, it would be låga änden, which has nothing to do with music in Sweden. Låga änden. Thank you so much for watching. Until next time, Roger that.